Recalc 12, Chapter 5.2, we're going to analyze exponential functions. So the standard form is y minus k equals c times a to the power of d times x minus h in brackets. Where we have a is greater than 0, and c and d are not equal to 0. The other form that we can use is y is equal to c times a to the power of d times x minus h in brackets, then plus k. And if we look at using the function notation, we have y is equal to c times f of d times x minus h in brackets, then add k. Here we have C is for vertical scaling and flipping, D is for horizontal scaling and flipping, H is the horizontal shift, and K is the vertical shift. Note that this looks exactly like the transformations that we've been doing for polynomials. However, we've replaced C for A and D for B. And the reason we've done this is because A is the base for our exponent, so we can no longer use A for vertical scaling. And what is the easiest point for us to transform? Well, that is y is equal to a to the power of zero because this equals one. Let's look at an example of a transformation. y is equal to 1.3 to the power of x. And we're gonna transform this by y is equal to two times 1.3 raised to the power of one third times x minus four in brackets and minus three. Here's the table of values, but let's do this like we've done our other transformations. So we need to scale vertically by two, and we need to expand horizontally by three. So we'll take this point, vertical by two, and we don't need to expand horizontally because it's at zero. Let's take the next point, this is roughly 1.2, 1.3, so this will be 2.4, 2.6. And it'll go out by three. So we'll move it there and then erase that dot. This one is about 1.7. So this will become about 3.4. And then we'll have to triple this. So this is at two, it'll move to six. And a point will be there. We've gone as far on this graph as we can to the right, so let's go left. Take this point, this is roughly 0.8, so we'll need 1.6, and we'll need to triple it to the left. So roughly there. Okay, now we can draw this curve. So what we had was a vertical expansion of two, and we had a horizontal expansion of three. Now we're looking at moving the graph right four, and we're moving down three. Here we have the four, and here we have the three. And the same rules applies as before. We have to do the scaling before we do the translation. Okay, let's take this point, one, two, three, four, right, and one, two, three, down. Take this point, one, two, three, four, right, one, two, three, down. Take this point, one, two, three, four, right, one, two, three, down. So it was four and three. And we simply join the points smoothly. And if we look at the, this table of values by plotting this function explicitly, we look at zero and we get negative 1.59. So roughly there. And if we look at one, two, three, four, 
four, we get negative one. So it's right there. Here's another type of problem that we're going to run into is determining an exponential function using tables. We can determine the exponential functions with a couple of consecutive values. So here we have 18, here we have six. To go from 18 to six, we're looking for a multiply or divide operation. This one is divide by three. So if we're dividing by three going forwards, we need to do multiply by three going backwards and this would be 54. We're dividing by three going forwards, so this is two, dividing by three, and we get two thirds. Let's look at this table. We're multiplying by two going forwards, that means we're dividing by two to go backwards, dividing by two, and we get three halves. So this function is y is equal to we take the zero value, so this is two times one third to the power of x. We take the forward value as the base. So we take the value at zero, y is equal to three times, the base is the value going forward, so that's times two to the power of x. Now let's look at some harder problems for some students, and that's word problems. These are called initial value problems, or they're also called growth and decay problems. So we use the formula y of t equals yi r to the power of k times t minus ti in brackets. And this is a different form from the transformations. Yi is called the initial value if ti equals zero. Otherwise, it is called the specified value. K is the reciprocal of the time it takes for the ratio to change. If we're just using whole units, um, then we ignore K. R is the ratio that the value changes by. And if you have a percentage change, you need to convert this to a ratio. So that means you need to divide it by 100. TI is the offset to the specified value if it's not at uh, time zero. This formula is very similar to our transformed formula. This is C for vertical scaling. This is D for horizontal scaling. And this is H for our horizontal shift. Now let's look at our problem. The amount of light reflected off a mirror is 97%. How much light is remaining after five reflections? So R is a percentage, we need to convert this to a ratio, so this is 97 divided by 100, so it's 0.97. K, there is no time involved, so we just set K equal to one. And the unit is actually, it's per mirror. So K represents one mirror. It's not a time problem, so ti is zero. And yi, that's our initial amount of light, that's 100%. We leave this as a percentage, so I'm gonna say don't correct this. It's not a ratio. It's not a ratio, it's just the amount of light that we have left. So we represent that as in terms of percentages. And we're evaluating this after five mirrors, so we just have t equals five. So we set this up, y of t equals 100%, and our ratio is 0.97, and we just have t, because k is one and t i is zero. So y of five equals 100, 
times 0.97 to the power of 5. And this is roughly 85.9%. And this is the amount of light after five reflections. Let's look at another problem. A certain bacteria doubles in population every four hours. If the initial population is half a million, what is the population after 10 hours? So, yi, that's our initial value, is 500,000. Our ti is zero, because we're told that the initial population is 500,000. So we can assume that is at time zero. And we're looking to evaluate this at time 10 hours. Our ratio is double, so that means two. K is one over the amount of time for the ratio to occur. So it doubles in four hours, so this is one over four. So we have Y of T equal to yi r to the power of kt. This equals 500,000 times 2 to the power of 10 over 4. And this is roughly 2.83 million. And that's the number of bacteria. Let's look at a harder example. Bacteria doubles every three hours. So we have R equals two, and every three hours, so one over the time, so K equals one third. In the eighth hour, so we have a specified time, TI equals eight. There are 1,000 bacteria, so this is YI. And this is our specified value. Remember that it's only an initial value if time equals zero. And we need to answer these questions. What is the equation for the bacteria growth? What is the initial population? And when will the population reach 9,000? So using our values that we picked off, y of t, equals 1,000 times two raised to the power of one third T minus eight. So our initial value is Y of zero, 1,000, two to the power of one third of zero minus eight. And that is roughly 157 bacteria. And let's do y of c. This will equal 9,000. And this is 1,000 times 2 to the power of 1 third c minus 8. We set this to y1. We set this to y2 on the calculator. And I've already put this in the calculator. So we set y1 to 9,000, we set y2 to our function, and we set a window. We have a minimum of zero for x, and a maximum of 20. If this doesn't work, we can reset 20. We need a y min of zero, and we need a y max of at least 9,000. So I'm gonna round it off to 10,000. Change your y scale to 1,000, otherwise you get scale marks all the way down the side. So if we plot this, we get this, then we use the intersection function, and we get an answer of 17.509. So we'll round this off, and the answer is 17.51 hours. Or if it asks you for rounded hours, you would round up to 18, otherwise you wouldn't have 9,000 bacteria. And make sure you use intersection and not intercepts. And that completes this lesson.